Hello and welcome to Flock and Fern. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to knit this super cute little sheet. This is going to be a video series, so there's going to be three different videos that will take you from start to finish of how to make this sheep. Um, there's some more kind of advanced stitches in there, some that we haven't covered on the channel yet, so it's going to be really exciting, and that's covered in video one. And then we're going to look at knitting up all the various parts in video two. And finally, in video three, we're going to uh, put the whole sheep together, um, which is the probably the fiddliest bit. If you want to rush ahead, that's absolutely no problem. If you click on the link below, you'll be able to get a pattern that will take you through it. Right, let's get started. So in order to knit the sheep, you're going to need the following. Some size 7 millimeter knitting needles, straight needles. Yarn of contrasting colour. I'm using a cream and a black because I'm going to have a traditional kind of cream body and then black arms, legs, ears and head. Some scissors. A darning needle that's big enough for the super chunky yarn that I'm using. A row counter or alternatively you can just use um, a, a pencil with your or a pen with your pattern and keep a tally of the rows. But I'm going to use one of these because it's um, my preferred method. Also optional is the use of some safety um, toy eyes. These are just plain black ones in various sizes. I often like to wait to see what kind of what the face looks like once I've knitted it up as to which size of eyes I'm going to use. Um, the, if you don't want to use these, absolutely fine. You could just use a contrasting colour of yarn for to the face. Um, so it could be a grey on the black face to, to make the to make the eyes, and that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, so we're going to start the body of the sheep, and to do that, I'm going to use the cream yarn. You can use a yarn of your choice. Um, the colour is not important, but this is a super chunky yarn, mainly because I want this to be big and fluffy, um, and it is a little Easter present for my baby niece. So I'm going to start by casting on 12 stitches using this yarn, and I'm just going to use the uh, thumb tail method cast on. So start with my slip knot. I'm going to slide that through. If you need a, a slowed down version of how to cast on, then check out the video at this link that's popped up on your screen now. Uh, I think that's 12, so I'm just going to go back and check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yeah, 12, there we go. So starting with the ball end, I'm going to start our very first row. So on my needle is my row marker that's going to keep me right as to where I'm at on the body of the sheep. And taking up my right needle, I'm going to go into that first stitch. And right the way along, I'm going to knit in into the front and the back of each stitch, which is going to double the amount of stitches on the needle for the next row. So to do that, I'm going to go in to the back as if to do a normal knit. But instead of sliding off at this point, I'm going to twist the needle around and go back in again through that back loop and knit into that stitch as well. So I've just made a new stitch. So that's knit front and back. Let me show you that again. So we're going to go in to the stitch as if to do a normal knit, wrap the yarn round like a normal knit, but then when we get to this point I'm just not going to slide it off, instead I'm going to get a bit of slack, put the right needle round the back again and into the back of the loop on the left needle, and then knit again going round the back in between the two, pull it down and then off. And so it's created double the amount of stitches we've got on the right needle now. So we are just going to continue that right away across the row and do that into every stitch and that will double our number of stitches from the 12 that we cast on to 24. And into the last stitch we're going to knit front and back again. There we go. Right, so now we should have 24 stitches on that right needle. 
Um, one of my top tips is to always count after you've done something like this, because if you've gone wrong, it means that every row after that that includes any kind of increase or decrease will be off. So let's just double check. Twenty four. Perfect. OK, so that's us done the first row. So I'm going to change my row marker to mark row one complete and um, equally just do a tally or keep note. Um, on your pattern. So now with row two, we are going to purl across all those 24 stitches that we've just made. If you need help on the purl stitch, then I'll check out the video that's on your screen now. And then we get to the end of that purl row and switch our needles around, just neaten that up a bit. And then amend our stitch marker. So we've got two rows now done. OK, so now we're going to start row three, which includes our new technique, the loop stitch. So in this very first stitch, we're going to knit front and back to create to increase again. And now we're going to do our very first loop stitch. So this is a new technique for this pattern. So with our right needle, we're going to go in to that next stitch as if we're going to knit. And we're going to get all the way to there of the knit stitch and we're not then going to slide it, this one off. What we're going to do instead is take that ball end of the yarn and bring it back through in between the needles, wrap it around our thumb, then put the yarn back in between the needles again and we're just going to keep our thumb holding the loop there and take the right needle and we're going to knit into that stitch again. So you're still, you've, you've kind of made another stitch but in order to, and then slide it off. But in order to lock that loop in place, we're then going to take the tip of the left needle and we're going to pick up this, this stitch here that's second down on the right needle and we're going to pick it up as if from the front and slide it up and over and then off because otherwise we would have created another stitch. But what that does is just lock that loop in place. Let me show that you that again. So we're going to go into the next stitch as if to knit and we're going to get all the way to before we would usually slip that stitch off and we're going to bring that work at yarn back in between the two needles, wrap it around our thumb, then go back through again, take the right tip into the, the stitch on the left needle and knit and then slide it off. Then with our left needle, we're going to go into this second stitch down on our right needle, scoop it up over that first stitch and off and that locks that loop in place. Okay and that's the loop stitch. So we're going to do that three more times so that we've looped five and then we're going to knit front and back in and repeat that across the row. So our third loop stitch, here we go. Wrap it round all the way to the point of slipping off don't slip it off at this point, ball end in between, wrap round your thumb, back round and then knit into that stitch again, this time slide it off and then lock that stitch in place by scooping up the second stitch that you've created, slide it up over and off that first stitch and there we've got our lovely loops. Okay two more times. And that's done five loop stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Super duper obvious. Don't worry if they're not the exact same length because it just adds to the character of the, the woolly body of the sheet. So don't worry about that at all. Now the next stitch, we're going to knit front and back again to create another stitch to do our increase. 
And there we go. And then we're going to loop stitch another five. So that's four there. And one more loop stitch. He's a bit fiddly. Don't worry if you're struggling. Do a few practice runs first. Lock that one in place. And then we're going to knit front and back again to do an increase. And then we are going to loop another five. So there's our increase. Loop one, loop two, loop three. Two more to go on this one. So let's check. There's our increase. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. So now we're going to do another increase. Knitting in the front and then the back of the stitch. And then we are going to loop another five. And then we're in the last stitch and we are going to loop that again. And not forgetting to pick that one up and lock it in place. Yay, we've done our first row of loop stitch in our sheep's body. And doesn't that look fab? So loopy and awesome. Um, and as, as you can see, like some of them are a little bit longer than others, but not by much. But it, it will, as it comes together, it just creates such a fun texture. Okay, so we're going to mark that on our row marker so that was the third row with the increases that we've done you should have 28 stitches along there and now with row four we are going to purl right the way along and we are just getting to the end of row four where we've purled all the way along and switch those round Mark on my row marker. And now we're ready for another loopy row. So we're now onto row five. And in the very first stitch, we are going to knit front and back again to increase. There we go. And now we're going to loop the next six, six stitches, then knit front and back again, and then loop another six stitches right the way across and repeat that along the row um, to continue increasing but also with our loopy body texture so we're going to go into loop and then again just don't forget to pick up and lock that loop in place by passing that over and then just continue that Let's have a look. We've got our knit front and back, which was our increase. And two, four, six loops. So now we're on a knit front and back again. Another increase. And then we are going to loop another six. And then, as I said before, we're just going to repeat that right the way along the row. And we will then increase the amount of stitches on the needle to 32 stitches. So don't forget to check. Okay, so there we've completed row five and we've got lots of loops and we've got 32 stitches on the needle. So we're going to switch 
over and we're now going to do row six which is purl right the way to the end Okay, so that was row six, where we have just purled right the way across. And now we're ready with row seven, where we are going to loop into every single stitch right the way across. Because we've done our increases, we're just going to loop all the way along. Okay, so that's us done row seven where we looped all the way along now onto row eight we are going to purl all the way along and then after that from rows nine to eighteen we are just going to repeat those two rows so purl loop all the way, all the way along from rows nine to eighteen ah, so this is row eight is our purl then row nine will be our loop right the way across and we'll just continue that until we get to row 80. So I'll see you back there. Okay, so that's us finished row 18 and we've now got this amazing loopy sheep's body coming well underway. So that's us done our increase at the bottom. We've got the main bit of the body here and now we're gonna start decreasing to shape the top of the body. So row 19 starts with a knit two together to decrease. So we're just going to go into that second stitch on the left needle. Across the back and wrap round as if to knit, but you're getting up both those stitches, sliding it up and off. So that's us knit two together. Now what we're going to do is loop stitch right the way across to the last two stitches, and then we're going to knit two together again. So that'll take us from 32 stitches down to 30. So we are going to loop across now. Okay, so we've looped along to the last two stitches of our this row, 19, and we're now going to knit these two together. So into that second stitch and knit. And that's us done row 19. Mark it on here. So we've now got 30 stitches on the needle and we're now going to purl right the way along for row 20. Okay, so that's us purled row 20 and we'll just update this. And now we're on to row 21. We're going to decrease again and then loop along. So again, knit the first two stitches together. Then we'll loop to, to two stitches remain on the needle and we're going to knit those two together. So let's loop all the way till there. Finishing up the loops, last two stitches, we are going to knit those two together for our decrease. There we go. And that was row 21. Now with row 22, we are going to purl all the way across again. Okay, so that's us purled all the way across. And for our next decrease in row which will be row 23 we are going to knit two together then we're going to loop five and then knit two together and repeat that right the way across so it's basically doing what we did for our increase in reverse so knit two together then we're going to loop five The fifth one. And you can just go back to check if you want. There's a two together, two, four, five, and then two together. 
our decrease and then loop another five and just repeat that right the way along. Okay, so that's us repeat that, knit two together, knit five across the row. We should now on our needle have 24 stitches. And now with row uh, 24, we are going to purl right the way along. There we are. So that was row 24, and we just purled. Now with row 25, we are going to do our final decrease, which is knit two together right the way across the row. So we are just going to constantly knit two together. And that'll take us down to 12 stitches, which is what we cast it on right at the start. Okay, so that's us purled together across the, uh, sorry, knit together across the row to do our decrease. So we now have 12 stitches on the needle. And what we're going to do is cut, leaving quite a long tail, maybe about, I don't know, 20 centimeters. So we're going to cut that. And then we are going to take that tail, thread it through those 12 stitches using our darning needle and secure it. And that's our way of binding off or casting off for the body of the sheep. So I'm just going to slide all the stitches off really carefully. Like so, and just thread it back through. If you've got a different technique for doing this, then please let us know in the comments because that would be really interesting. Sometimes I think this is a bit risky. And I could maybe improve this a bit. Threading that all the way through, especially with this many stitches. <laughs> Almost there. There we are. And we're just going to pull that so it's nice and tight and coming back on itself. And that's just formed the top of the body and closed it off. And then I'm going to thread that through and tie a little knot to secure it. And I'm going to leave that tail attached for now because we're going to need that when it comes to making up the, the, the sheep itself. But there you go. There is the body of our sheep. Um, it's all loopy and fluffy and just awesome. And it adds to the character of the sheep because its texture is amazing with that stitch. So although it was tricky, it's definitely worth it. So when we get to the making up part in uh, one of the later videos, we'll be able to show you what we're going to do with the tail ends and how we're going to start shaping it. So there we are. There's the body of the sheep. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this really useful. It takes a long time for us to do these videos and to make the content that we do, not only with the patterns and the design and the actual knitting of them, but it's a lot behind the scenes on the video editing and things like that. So one of the things that would be really helpful for us as a channel and to keep us going is if you hit the subscribe button, it, it helps with our algorithm on YouTube and it also helps with you getting a notification. And otherwise, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, then leave a comment in the comments box and we'll get back to you as soon as you can. So I hope you found that smashing. I certainly did. And I'm excited to see you on the next part. Uh, happy knitting.